like Fez Parker and the Aldo Ray and the Van Heflin, and they were my recruits. And they were very good actors, and I had to do that marching up and down and yelling at them. And I got the part, it was cast right away, and I was thrilled to death to think that I would be cast in a major motion picture at a major studio with a big director. Anyway, when I went down to get my Warner uniform fitted, the uniform or the wardrobe man looked at me and smiled. And he says, uh, I, got a, I got a memo for Ronald Walsh, and he wants me to spray this uniform on you, like it's sprayed on you. And I, that was because they wanted everything to be just perfect. They wanted me to look like a real Marine drill instructor. Well, anyway, we shot the film here, or rather in uh, Hollywood, and then went down to San Diego to the Marine Corps base for a while and shot down there, and I had good part in did my rough stuff. And then the film was released uh, at Huntington Park, I remember distinctly. It was released to the press for a sneak preview and for a press review. And the big crowd that night, and they were kind of amused at my antics. And, and uh, got, uh, the newspaper gave me some good reviews, gave me some very good reviews. And as a result, Warner Brothers placed me under contract player's contract. Boy, that was a thrill to be under a contract to a big studio. Anyway, they put me into all kinds of films, and like Mr. Roberts, uh, Henry Fonda, I worked with Henry Fonda, and court martial of Billy Mitchell with Gary Cooper, and I uh, worked with some big stars, people that I admired and loved. And, 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 and in a way, I even did uh, testing scenes with starlets. Jane Mansfield, I did her very first screen test. But in a way, uh, I got a lot of experience doing that film, films for Warner Brothers, doing mainly test films and the small parts, but I got a lot of experience, which I desperately needed. Then I was cast in a very important film called Texas Lady. That was the star was Claudia Colby. She was kind of winding down her career in those days. Anyway, they put her in this picture and they cast me as the heavy who was kind of a lover to her. I had a good part. And uh, they were kind of reluctant to hire me, in particular Claudette, because she was 19 years old and I was. And, uh, but I'm, I wasn't afraid. I, I thought she still looked great. <laughs> <laughs> and I wanted to do the role and I was happy to get the part in. I think secretly, I never told anybody that this, but you're the first to know this. I wanted to do the role because she had done a love scene with Clark Gable. <laughs> <laughs> and I wanted to be able to say, I did a love scene with Claudia Claire Colbert, who did a scene with Clark Gable. <laughs> I wanted to kind of brag about that. But anyway, anyway, uh, my career all this time was riding high. I was doing quite well. Got married to a beautiful girl. Had our first baby during the time of Claudette Colbert's picture, Texas Lady. And then one day, a guy came to me who lived right across the street from us in West Hollywood. A little chubby, friendly guy from Arkansas, I mean Alabama. And he used to like to talk to me about movies. He said he was called of God to come to the West Coast <laughs> to make biblical ethics. <laughs> I looked at him and he had no experience, no background in making films at all. He didn't realize the cost, the expense. But anyway, he, he would talk to me about making biblical ethics. He'd seen the Ten Commandments and he was overwhelmed by its grandeur. But anyway, he came to me about a year, nine months, a year later, and he said, Greg, I want you to co-star in this film I'm making. He said, you'll be co-starring with Billy Lugosi. <laughs> I said, well, well Billy Lugosi's dead. <laughs> <laughs> he said, well, well that, that's not a problem. <laughs> he says, we have some stock footage of Bella Lugosi, and I have this director, writer, who is writing a screenplay around that footage. 
Probably about a hundred feet of film. He was writing a whole screenplay around that footage. And I said, oh, let me let me read the script. And it was terrible. It looked like a class of five year old had written. It made no sense. It made no sense. It you know, the cars would drive in in the sunlight and Come in the next scene, it was in the darkness. It just, just did not make any sense at all. And I tried my best to to talk my friend. His name was Ed Reynolds. I tried to talk it out of him, but he wouldn't. He was so convinced that God was in this thing. In fact, Ed Wood was so involved in the friendship that he even joined this guy's church and was baptized. <laughs> and I was there the day that he was baptized. And, Anyway, when when Ed, Ed Wood was baptized, he immersed, he immersed Ed Reynolds said, Amen. And I couldn't help but say, Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> See, I had worked with some big directors by that time. Ronald Walsh, or Mervyn LeRoy, and Otto Preminger, and I had worked with some big directors. I was very apprehensive about this this young guy, Ed, Ed Wood. He asked me to come and meet him at a luncheon one day, and he was a handsome, he looked like Earl Flynn. He had a mustache, he, he, he looked, he was a very handsome, well-dressed man, and he just gushed over me, told me how good I would be in that film, how perfect I was for the part. And I, I reluctantly, reluctantly accepted the role. <laughs> By the way, you probably don't know this, but the first the title to that film the original title was Grave Robbers from Outer Space. Grave Robbers from Outer Space. <laughs> Somehow the people who put the money up decided that was not a good title, so it would change it to Plan 9 from Outer Space. So that became the title. And I never told my agent that I was going to do this film because I know he would bust a gasket. It was a four-day schedule, so I thought I could somehow sneak it in there. And I wanted to do this film because I didn't want my friend to lose his money. I had had a little bit of prestige, a little bit of a name in those days, and I thought it might help, but it didn't. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't help a bit. Anyway, I, I, I came to the set the first day to the soundstage. It was a little dinky soundstage on the corner of Western Avenue in Santa Monica. It was kind of ensconced in the back of a uh, alley where that was a big old old timey hotel and a bar on this side. And it was the dinkiest, dustiest looking thing you've ever seen. The, the sets and the props were just terrible. It looked like a fifth grade class had put it up. And the actors, I didn't recognize any of the actors. They were friends of Ed Wood, ex wives, ex, ex uh, boxer or wrestler. They were all his old chums. I don't think that was one or two, maybe one or two professional actors on the whole show. But anyway, I came home that, that first day and said to my wife, you know, honey, I think I'm doing the worst film ever made. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, my prophetic assess assessment what came through. They could not get anybody to distribute that film. They put it together, but they could not get anyone to distribute the film. It was so bad. Poor Ed Reynolds, he went to New York to other distributors. Nobody would touch it. Finally, he did get the uh, film uh, released for some very, very small uh, distributor, but he had to pay for the prints himself. He made, made, had to pay for the prints. But anyway, this caused him to be in Deeper Hawk. He was so in hock with what he had borrowed some money from friends and they were asking for that money and he was the picture became a real heartbreaking experience for A. Reynolds. He had tried everything he could to make it good, to make it important, but it was just not a good film and it was a slump job. In a way, it's so disheartening to him that he gave him a heart attack and he killed him. He died on account of that film. Well, in a way that Prince lay in the lap, gathering dust, and that came a guy about four or five years later named, named Wade Williams. He bought <coughs> screen rights to the film, and he somehow